Hi there, it's Sheila with designsbybabymoon.com and I wanted to show you how you can make a personalized Seon cord wrap um, for yourself or for someone in your family or even to make and sell on your own website or Etsy shop. Um, it's a really fast, simple embroidery project, but I wanted to show you how it works. So once you've gotten this design from the Designs by Baby Moon website and added it to your cart and checked out, um, I'm going to show you how you can use Embrilliance embroidery software to add a name or something else to this design if you'd like. So let's go over to Embrilliance and see how to do this. Okay, so I've got the personalized cord wrapper already open on my screen. As you can see, it it's sized just right to fit a 4x4 four four hoop. Now you can do it in a larger hoop if you'd like, but if you have a 4x4 four four hoop, this is a great way to use up scraps, um, even scraps of stabilizer or um, scraps of uh, whatever you've got around to make these. They're so fast and easy. I like to use upholstery vinyl for the top and then felt for the back of these just because it's not rough and felt is very cheap, very inexpensive. Um, the, the upholstery vinyl that I like to use uh, right now I can get at Joann's or online at places like My Punk Bordry or The Vinyl Nest or Blue Pumpkin Vinyl. Um, those are some of my favorites. There are a lot of places that you can get upholstery or embroidery vinyl on the internet. Um, I do not recommend you using adhesive vinyl like you would use for your cutting machine or heat transfer vinyl for this project at all. Um, it's not thick enough and it actually doesn't do what you need it to do for this project. So once you have the cord wrap design open on your screen, you're going to use the lettering tool in Brilliance, which is this um, A button. It says create letters. So let's click that and it'll bring up our lettering tool. And the last font I used was this one from Applique Corner called Smith. And it's a really fun font. So let's just use that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type my name down here in the properties box where it says ABC. First of all, I'm going to spell my name correctly. And then I'm going to click set and that will make the lettering change to my name. Now I use the one inch size and you have enough um, space in this file to uh, use a one inch or half an inch font just depending on the look that you're going to. Um, this font is just really fun and elegant and it's very stylish and I like to use it a lot. What I'm doing here is I'm just moving some of the letters so they're a little bit closer. You can use the slider bars on the bottom of the um, properties window to bring them closer together or farther apart to however the letters are. Do you like it? You can take each letter, click on it and gra grab it to make it smaller or larger to fit with your design the way you like it till it looks good to your eye. I like the way this looks and so I'm going to take and click on the whole letters again over here in the object window and then I'm going to simply turn it 90 degrees by using this arrow button right here that rotates at 90 degrees counterclockwise. Then I'm going to click somewhere on that lettering set and drag it up to this open area. Because I just went 90 degrees, it's already perfectly lined up. It's filling the space nicely. It's not going to be in the way of the area where we're going to put the snaps. Um, when you're sewing it out, you actually don't have to use that step at all. But um, you can skip it, but I like to keep it there because I'm not always good at putting my snaps in exactly the right place so that they match up on the front to the back. So that's why there's a placement stitch here. When I go to my embroidery machine, um, what this design will do first is stitch out the a placement stitch so that you know what to cover with your vinyl. Then you'll, um, you'll just stitch that straight onto your stabilizer and I just use a medium tear away stabilizer. You'll put a piece of upholstery vinyl on the top and then you'll run all of the letters that you put in and the placement steps for the snaps 
you'll run those. And then on the back of your hoop, you'll take your hoop off and you'll add a piece of felt um, or another piece of upholstery vinyl. That would be fine too. Something that doesn't fray. You'll add it to the back of your hoop by using a little bit of tape or even some sticky spray like 505 or the Dritz quilting basting spray. Something that doesn't gum up your needle. And then you'll put your machine back I mean, your hoop back on the machine, and you'll stitch the final outline, which also includes these nifty little buttonholes that you can run your cord through. So you'll take that off your machine, cut it out completely all around the outline, and then you'll stick your scissors all the way through both layers right in the middle of these buttonholes. Um, I would use very, very sharp scissors, and I would be very careful not to cut yourself. So you might want to do this on a cutting mat. You can also use an X-Acto knife, but you'd slice these buttonholes open just like you would if you were making a garment and you were doing buttonholes. And that's it. You're done. Um, you, when you add your cam snaps, um, you can thread your earbuds or the end of your charger cord through here and then keep that snapped while, you, while it's on your charger cord or on your earbuds. And that way there's no question in your household who's... Uh, earbuds or whose charger cord this is. So I hope you found that helpful and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you and I hope to see you over in our Facebook group where you could share how yours came out or ask questions or get more help. Thanks for watching.